So this is uh, the start of a new piece. We uh, decided to do um, this hummingbird photo that I had taken and uh, we are going to do more ink work on this one and then you can decide how much color you want to do with it. Um, while I was thinking about this whole thing um, and the fact that I want more of the ink to kind of uh, shine through rather than as much of the watercolor, I was trying to decide what I wanted to do with the background. So you can leave your background uh, completely white. You can um, play with it like one of the artists I saw on the Inktober, she was taking like a band of blue. She would do her animal and then she'd have a band of blue that would come behind it just in a kind of a mm -hmm. rectangular shape and, and made an interesting shape or sometimes she'd have a circle, that kind of thing. So you could do that. Uh, I started playing with, like the first one I did was I used my one of my ink pens that will um, is not waterproof and so I put sort of the all of the texture of the leaves back there and then was playing with the idea well you could wet it and um, have it kind of blur but I wasn't liking that it was too much happening so then I thought well what if I made a shape oh, back that. there and so then I started thinking yeah I like that shape but do I want it to be that color because if I put any color on the bird, which I am going to put just a little, um, and maybe a little bit of color in a few of the flowers, then do I want it green? So then I printed out four more, and I tried um, a gray. This is um, a kind of a rusty, I think it's my quinacridone uh, burnt sienna or sienna. Um, a blue and then I was playing with, I ended up playing with two things. This one was um, oh, seeing if I did a wet and wet with two colors and this paper because it's just cardstock did not handle the wet and wet well so it didn't really blend together, it was just drying. Um, and then the final thing that I really think I'm going to do is using um, sap green and um, probably my ultramarine deep to make a cooler green that will recede behind the bird and um, I can you know have some color in there but it won't be in your face color so there are times where when you're getting ready to do a painting just doing little studies like this can really help you make up your mind what you're going to do before you commit on your painting. Um, and I printed mine off, but you could just do a quick little, like, okay, here's my bird outline. It doesn't have to be any detail at all. And then I'm going to try this color, or I'm going to try this technique. The other thing you can do is you could just leave it without any color at all in the background and just have it be the ink um, on the bird and the flower. Or you could paint a wet and wet type of background where you put the water on and then just um, put in a few colors and let them kind of bleed and move or you could have it be a solid color. So there's a lot of variety that can happen. Um, so what I did was I sketched my um, drawing in, I like to use the Borden Riley uh, waterproof, uh, not waterproof, bleed proof paper. Um, for pens because when I draw on it with a pencil um, it doesn't smear okay. and I did a grid because I wanted to just give myself a little bit of you know make sure that I was getting the proportions and everything where I want it and um, it just is a for me it takes time to draw the grid but it, it then can be a little faster and I used, I added the grid to my photo on my tablet uh, using the artist grid. Um, I don't know if it'll show up there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, using the artist grid um, app that I have, and um, that just made it pretty quick to be able to decide how many boxes, how many squares I need, and then so these are an inch. And on my paper, I did an inch and a half. And then once I had everything drawn out, then I actually scanned this on my printer 
and told my printer to darken the values of the print. So I started with it like that and that was not very dark and you couldn't see all the lines um, in there. So then I, I upped the value and just said printed dark and so then it printed um, pretty well all of my pencil line and then once I had this print, then I took this print, laid it back on the printer, and told it to print it dark again. Um, oh no, actually what I did, sorry, what I did was I scanned it at this point, once, once it was dark enough I could scan it, and then I took it into my um, one photo software and I enlarged it to the size I want and I told it to darken, um, do a higher contrast image. So a lot of the time though when I'm doing a drawing for a watercolor once I have my drawing done then I'll go in with an ink pen and ink it all and I just thought I'm gonna be inking it on my painting. <laughs> I didn't want to you know put in that effort when I'm going to be doing it already. So um, so then once I had this and this is two pieces of paper that I've taped together I went to my light table and put this down and then put my watercolor paper on top and uh, then used it to draw um, my drawing. And because we are going to be a little more controlled with the marks and, and the ink is, oops, let me turn this off. The ink is um, the more important part of this, then I wanted to make sure I had my lines in well. Oh, um, I did add, um, on the photo, there, this, where this touches, right here on the wing, that, um, that area where it overlaps is called a tangent. And so if you ever have something where it's just sort of touching, that can draw the viewer's eye and it can, it just keeps pulling you toward that. So because there is an open space right in here, I decided that even though I left that overlap, and you could take, actually remove it, um, I added another flower. So um, this flower right here was just added in so that it would maybe take a little bit of the attention away from, from that area down there. So it's just a, a flower there and then I think that was the only change other than you know the background. So, um, so I'm just going to do a quick start on his head because when I'm doing a uh, drawing of a bird or an animal or a human I always will start up in that area because then if something is not working then I can redo and not have spent all my time elsewhere. So I am not going to add any ink lines to the what will be the color in the background. I'm just going to leave that without ink and I decided I was going to use my dip pen but you can use any technical pens or anything you want to try. And this is just the way that I'm going to do his head, but you might decide you want to try a different technique. So I will start with the eye. And I think I may zoom in just a little bit since I'm going to be just up in the head area. So I am... I find with the dip pen that it will start to dry if I'm not using the ink and that if I just go back in to the well and get some more, like that, get some more on there, it usually will um, be wet enough that it will start. And I need to be quiet for a second so I can actually make a circle. Okay. So because the eye is going to be black, um, I usually will make the outline, if you have a bird that has a lighter eye, um, you may just want the outline and not fill it in, but I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. And one of the other things that I will sometimes do is sometimes you will have the highlight on the eye, but then you may also have, like on the opposite side, you may have a little um, area where he's got some reflection happening. And so right there, I just used um, some kind of hash marks to create a, um, a lighter area in the one section of his eye. Okay. And then he has, how many birds have um, these, they kind of look like 
really fancy um, eyelashes. So I'm just doing it. There's a little ridge around his eye that has some marks that come out and you can see it in some places and not so much in others. And if you have a tablet or a phone or something that you can put your picture on, um, it can really help you to zoom in, especially when you're doing a detailed drawing like this. And then it also depends on how detailed you want it because you could just do a uh, less detailed drawing and it would still have interest and um, look like the hummingbird. So now I'm just going in and I'm starting to find the shapes. This is a darker shape that is some of his feathers that kind of lead into the beak. And I am, I will, I don't know how much uh, watercolor I will be using on it, but I do know that this little area I want to have some shadow. I need to grab some more ink because it is drying, because I keep talking. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is, if I can get it started, there we go. I'm just going to add just a little bit of shadow to that, but that could be something that you add uh, later if you want as well. You don't have to put it all in at once. Is, is this the waterproof ink? This is the waterproof, yeah. And um, I tend to um, kind of go back and forth and work around. And I don't always do, do exactly what my um, pencil drawing is showing me because usually when you come back to it a second time, then you start to see things even beyond what you were seeing maybe when you penciled it in. Let's see. There's... I'm going to bring this down. And so I will just keep going with this. Let's see if I can do this and not make a mess. He has a very um, sharp point to the end of his beak, and that it's very highlighted. Right up in there is a very highlighted area to the beak. And in some places, just having a little bit of a not um, solid line is kind of nice as well. And then this is well in shadow it's a little hard to draw with it this far away from me too okay. and then he has um, hummingbirds have and I'll show you on here they have they almost look like a little scallop feathers. Their feathers do this kind of thing. Um, and on the top of his head, he's got uh, little feathers that overlap. And they're, they're almost like a, a little C shape, depending on what you're seeing, uh, how the light's hitting them. And then he's also got um, a variety of uh, color. So he has, uh, this may be a female actually, as I'm saying he constantly, um, because she's got uh, the rusty color down here of a Rufus, but she doesn't have the orangier color that the male will have, but it depends on the time of year maybe also, or if they're younger. And so just, I would suggest, just start putting in things where you know where, they're, where they are. Uh, you can get lost pretty quick with, with a drawing sometimes, but if you just take your time and, and if you're like, okay, I know that there's the eye, I'm going to put the eye in now, and then there's a darker place under the eye, then 
that starts to get you um, kind of familiar with where everything is in the, the form. There's a right here. So if you also would, you know, if you just want to put in like, okay, there's, this is the uh, warmer green area. If you want to sort of mark that and then maybe put some of the, the lines of where the feathers are here, you could do that as well and not start patching anything. You could just do the outline of where everything is. So some of these are just sort of random marks. As long as there's a little bit of texture in there and you have a few that are reading as the um, feathers, some of those little marks that you make don't have to be a perfect exact for every feather. And then down as it comes um, down his neck here, he's got longer feathers. So I want to mark that in there. And all of these guys have just enough value to them that I'm going to go ahead and mark it. And these on his neck come down his neck in sort of lines. Um, and they, they do kind of get muddled together as they're getting farther back in this area. But um, in the, in the uh, part close to his beak, they do sort of have a line that they follow. I keep saying he, her feathers. So uh, I will uh, try to get farther along with mine, but I'll let you guys go back and uh, start on yours, and then um, maybe I'll show you um, just some up more in the wings and down in this area as we get a little farther. Um, for the flower, there is in this area of the flower there are highlights and there are water droplets that are in there so I'll just do this one flower here and there are places where um, the color sort of fades it doesn't it's lighter here but it sort of goes from a darker pink and then sort of fades and that's why I did a, a dashed line right there um, let's see, let's see where I'm outside edge. There is a leaf that comes over right in there. I drew it differently than I'm seeing on the picture. So, Okay, so there are highlights. But I'm going to just go around and then in here is a highlight at the top edge. There is a highlight there and this curls and there's a piece right there. Okay. And then for the um, water droplet, you can uh, mark in there if there is a color change. So I'm seeing a little 
color change right in there, and then I've marked where the water droplet is. And there is a, I can't tell if it's a water droplet because the photo is far enough back for me. But basically, I'm just going to start going around all the lines. If you have a line or you have an area, like I said, where it uh, goes from a darker color into a lighter color, you can either just leave that line off if you don't want to put, put a demarcation line like right here, or you can do sort of a little dashed line if you want to have that in there. And it really just kind of depends on what you would like to include. And um, yeah, I haven't decided whether or not I want to put any hatching in the, the flower yet. So I think I'm going to leave that off for now. I won't do that, but uh, on the hummingbird I will. So I will let you guys go get started and I'll just come around and see if you need anything. So I did, um, I did more of the feathers and got a little more in, and now as I come around toward the wings, then I am working with longer feathers, I, you can kind of see that, and so then I'm going to bury the, the mark and make the feathers longer. Now they, these feathers do have um, a little bit of green at the end of them, but I'm not going to Put that in with my pen. I'm going to just leave it um, because they're close in value. You could, if you wanted to, put a little mark there to remind yourself that the tip of this feather is going to be green. Um, and I think I got confused when I was drawing with my pencil because I do have I do have the tips marked on some of them. But the feathers themselves are a little wider than what I drew them on my drawing, so I'm going to 
white in those. And then as I come around to the wing, this is not always the easiest thing, so I will try to do it in one pass. I'm going to try to do one long swoop. If you can kind of get your arm in the action, um, depends on what you're doing, but that can help to so get the ink going. Yeah, it gets a little wobbly down at the end. Okay, and then there are some darker areas on the feathers right in here where I'm seeing some little marks um, in that area that are just a little bit of texture to the feather. Ink. And then as I come down toward, I'm going to put these in right quick, but as I come down toward um, the lighter parts of the feathers, I will try to keep that um, kind of a lighter mark with my pen. Let's see if I can do it. So I'll try to just come up on the edge and not give it a whole lot of pressure. And if you can do that with your technical pen, some pens are easier to do that with than others. But that will give it the feeling of a lighter part to the wing. And this is a darker line that he's got running through his wings. And if you could see the line up close, it's actually skipping over the page just a little bit so that it has that Oops. It goes right there. And that's just either coming on the side of the pen or using a little less pressure. come back in over here there is a feather right there that I didn't put in and there is a dark um, patch right here I don't know if it's shadow or just different color on the feather right there So I will do the same thing with that wing back there. And then for his uh, belly, I think I actually want to clean this up just a little bit because it's a little wobbly. For his belly, he has some feathers that are coming in right about here and then they actually kind of swoop out just a touch. And he, his feet are hiding right down in here and they're really hard to see in the photo because um, they are dark and the background is dark and so he's got um, his two little feet sort of right in that area and then some white and right here on his belly he's got um, darker uh, rusty colored feathers and then a little bit of green so right up in here this piece right here is a little green and I'm just going to mark a few of the feathers in here because they're longer and so I just want to give it a little bit of texture so that it's not um, totally flat looking. And then as I come down, so if I can just put these in right quick. So I'm basically following what's there, but if I don't have every feather exact, it'll be okay. And 
And then as I get down toward the tail, then I'm going to uh, start using the longer lines. Let me get these two in right quick. and obviously follow the form of the feather. And he has some bright kind of orangey feathers. I'm, I'm skipping around here because I want to make sure I save that area. So like right in here it's sort of orange. got white tips on these guys. So then I can go in and figure out where I'm at. Okay. And then I could either do that and just hatch it all or you could take, and this is kind of alluding to what we were talking about mm -hmm. with the um, using a brush and a darker bird. So you could take a paintbrush and just your ink mm -hmm. and bring the ink in that way so that you're not having to ink all the and get a little more solid look from it. And then this will have to dry really well if I was going to put any watercolor in this area because it is thicker. So you have to just be careful of that. And I'm kind of lost as to where my Dark is. That's like a certain number of feathers back there. Yeah, he's got some layers of tail feathers yeah. happening right in there. So, yeah. And I'm actually going to use. I need to clean this because I'll just put it in there. Um, because it can the India ink can. Um, dry and stick on your paintbrush so you want to make sure you clean it pretty quick and then I'll probably put it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol to make sure it's totally clean and this is not a brush that I use uh, to paint watercolor with so I would say if uh, if you don't have a brush that you can sort of dedicate toward the ink side of things that I would maybe wait on that because you don't want to get it stuck in your uh, regular brushes and I probably made that a touch wide, so I'm going to go ahead and make that lighter. But yeah, there's a few layers of tail feathers down in there because when they fan their tails out, it kind yeah. of makes a, a fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, so they they have quite a few feathers in their tail. And then I'll bring that, and then just a few marks because it changes color. Um, so it's sort of a rusty color here and right here on the underside of his um, tail there and then uh, just a few marks over here and I'll let you guys go work on yours so I have the flowers I, I kept going and just kept inking them right now they sort of look like um, a color coloring book because it's just the black outline so if I go in and even just a few marks here and there like to follow the form of um, the front of that flower, and then I'm going to do the same thing there, maybe just a little bit, a few marks here and there can help separate some of those um, petals, and I can go a little darker there, try to see where I'm at, okay. and then this um, is actually, come on, Like this is darker here. Now when you are thinking about adding hatching to an area, remember that if you decide to add watercolor to it, that is also going to, the hatching is going to add another little bit of value depending on how dark you make it. And uh, so um, you might go a little lighter than, you know, don't necessarily fill it in as dark a value as maybe you're seeing because the watercolor is going to add to that as well. 
And then just a touch there. And this petal, or this leaf right there, is um, curled over. Uh, the water droplet that's underneath has a little bit of highlight. I wasn't going to add anything, and then I just decided that I think it will read better, and you'll be able to see the different parts of the mm -hmm. flower if I add. Yeah, now it's coming to 3D before it was kind of... Yeah, so you can see so where complex. this is different than this, and you start to kind of be able to separate things mm -hmm. a little better. Um, see just a touch of value right in there. I think this could go just a little darker still. And it would be okay just to start with it a little light yeah. and then decide, okay, I want to add just a touch more because it needs to have a little more in, a play, in an area. So um, I will uh, just continue that way and I need to finish the, the wing on the back of the bird, but he's pretty much got, um, actually there's just a little bit of value right come on and here that I can add just to sort of separate that from the bottom of his um, lighter feathers that are up above and if I decided I wanted to adjust anything in here well I don't I actually don't know that I would because um, his feathers here are pretty much light the whole way through. The only place I'm actually seeing a little bit of value, um, and it's he doesn't have a, a lot of light on him in this photograph. She, I should say, she doesn't have a lot of light. But there is just a little bit of a value change, mm -hmm. kind of right down in here, uh, as in order to sort of give her a little bit of a, you know, that rounded feel to her. And then she does have a little bit up in uh, this portion of her neck. I'm not sure if I want to put that in. Oh, and just a touch right in here along her head, I'm seeing, will help um, kind of give her a little more form. Yeah, I haven't decided what I want to do um, for the neck yet, but uh, I think I will leave it at that for now. And, all right, I lie. Right there, just a little bit. So the, the feathers in this area are going down this direction, but she does have just a little bit of value down um, right in here that will help separate this from this part of the wing. So anytime you can add just a little bit here and there, even if you don't want to color it in completely, that can help uh, separate areas. Put just a touch here as well. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna stop and then I will uh, continue adding more lines to this and just getting that ready so that I can show you some watercolor in a little while. So um, the uh, inking on the hummingbird is done for now. I can always go back once I've got some watercolor on there and add some to it if I decide I want to. And the uh, flowers, I stopped. There's some more down here that I'll still ink in. And I've started to get some shadowing on some of it, but it's the same thing here that I can add shadow or marks in there um, even after I've got some watercolor on it. And I am not 
thinking of this one necessarily um, as putting watercolor on everywhere on this bird. So I'm going to start kind of slow and it may be just a few places here and there. I know I want some around his head, maybe a little bit on the back and right here on this wing because I like the green that comes in right on his shoulder area right there. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be hard for me to stop because I really like to add color. <laughs> so that's the harder thing for this one is deciding, do you want to keep going? And you can, if you decide, you know, I, I want to just put color everywhere, you could go ahead and do that. Um, just to give you some color ideas, um, for the brighter kind of limey green, I will probably use a little bit of my green gold because it is a very intense, let me zoom out actually, so the palette will show. Sorry, hopefully I will do this without blinding anyone. Okay, and I'll move this over just a touch. All right, so um, my green gold, which is what I have out right here, is a very intense um, green, yellow green, and it's, the one I have is Daniel Smith, and it is um, a pop off yeah. your page yes. kind of vibrant green. I love it, but it can take over mixes too. So if you have um, a wet area of color on your palette or on your paper, so I've got a little bit of cobalt there, and if I take some green gold and put it right next to it, it wants to immediately, it may not show as much on the hot press paper, but it just, sh just starts shoving at the other um, colors. And that might not be a bad thing, depending on what you're doing, but um, it is, yeah, it just wants to take over. It's very bossy. Okay, so I am going to, the other way that you could mix a, a color similar to that is by using, and I have Hansa instead of lemon, but you could use lemon yellow with some phthalo blue and that will give you a very vibrant lime green and I would say very little of the phthalo in the mix a lot more of the um, yellow for the colors that I'm seeing but even this is probably still a little too it's probably it's not quite he's a little more um, yeah that's a little too lime green so if you are thinking, well, I don't have green gold um, and I want to have a little bit of that yellow color, I would also try, and this is part of that, just pulling out your colors and trying mixes. This is uh, Quinn Gold, and I'm going to try a touch of the uh, Thalo Blue with it. And so that's better, it's not going to, um, Vibrate as much as the green gold. Because it's mm -hmm. really great down because of the lack of direct sun. Right, yeah. So you could use that or you could try uh, New Gamboge because that is a warmer yellow with a touch of the phthalo. And to me, this is probably where I would go if I didn't have um, some green gold because, uh, and I may use some of this anyway, because mm -hmm. this is a touch more vibrant than the Quinn Gold and the phthalo. So it's just a little stronger. Now, once you get into the green or, or um, cooler green feathers, I should say, then um, you could use phthalo, but you don't want a lot of it. And I would probably go with um, phthalo and my Oriolan yellow um, to make a, a cooler, um, kind of almost turquoisey feather. The other option, because I have it on my palette, is ultramarine turquoise. And I really like this color. This is ultramarine turquoise just by itself. And it's um, a really nice color, but it's probably a little too strong just for straight, using it straight that way. So I would probably use ultramarine turquoise and a touch of Oriolan um, with it just so that it makes it a little less turquoisey, um, just to have that cooler feather look in there. All right, so 
I'm probably not going to use a ton of green gold if I use it, and it will probably go on after I put on a little other color. So I'm going to start with um, my new gamboge and the thalo. And thalo is not really a color that I use that often, but um, it works well for this application. And so I'm keeping this on the actually won't go a touch warmer the warmer side of that mix because I want it to be a warmer greeny gold and so I'm using that around his Hawaiian head <clears throat> and I actually am leaving some little bits of white paper showing through here and there because I think that adds to the feeling that he's kind of shiny even though it's not really bright, brightly lit. Um, and then as I go toward the left side of his head, that's where I'm going to use the ultramarine turquoise and Oriolan. I actually, yeah, all right, we'll try it. Um, and it's still damp next, uh, where I put the uh, warm yellow. And I'm, I don't mind if they bleed together just a touch because uh, his feathers do that in places anyway. And then at the top of his head, sort of hard to see on the photo, I'm switching to a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm, I think I'm just going to go, I, I grab just a touch of that ultramarine, I mean, thalo and nougamboge because it's a little um, more neutral and he actually goes a little browner as he comes toward his the top by his beak and then I think I'm just going to put just a swatch of color with some water I'm going to take water and just kind of let it blur down into this area so that he has some of that color in here without me having to indicate every feather. Which one is that? This is the New Gamboge and Thalo. And I'm just going to let it hopefully hit the water, but it's not this paper because it's the hot press. I need to actually wet it a little more, see if I can get the color to move just a touch. Okay, and then some of that ultramarine turquoise, and I'm just going to let it touch in there in places. And I'm going back to the new gamboge and ultramarine, I mean, thalo, and put just a few more marks in here. And I want to add just a few of those because I like that little bit of green peeking through right in there. Okay. Um, now I could go in I actually think I will. I'm, I'm going to put just a few of the neck um, feathers. And this is more of that uh, burnt sienna with my thalo and new gamboge so that it's... Oops, I want more burnt sienna in that. Um, burnt sienna and thalo blue can make a uh, kind of a neutrally green color, which will work well for any um, place that's a little darker, like right, right in there. And then his feathers on his neck right now are not catching the light, and the reason that they look her feathers, oh my gosh, I'm never going to figure that out. <laughs> Um, they're not catching the light right now, so they are not um, really vibrant, but they do have just a little bit of color to them. So I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth between 
sort of the burnt sienna and a neutral brown kind of feel to it. And I'm not going to do all of them because again, I'm trying to have some of the ink show through on here. So the last place that I want to put just a little bit is down in the belly because on a Rufus, they have a rusty color um, belly and she has, uh, if you could see her feathers on her tail open, you would see she has some rust color in there as well. So I wet that area and then I'm just going to put just a little bit of color. Is that burnt sienna? This is burnt sienna. If I were doing this on a hummingbird that was more brightly lit, I would probably use the quinacridone. Um, I keep forgetting. I believe it's quin. Yep, it's quinacridone sienna. So it is a little oranger than straight burnt sienna. So here's burnt sienna. And so that that more vibrant color would be for a bird that's really lit. And so just a few marks in there and then I want to put just a little bit right there on the tail cuz I'm seeing it in the photo. And I think I'm going to leave him like that. Now, if you wanted to put a little bit of color in the wings, um, you could do that. I may decide to do that once I get a little color over here. And or if I put some color in the background and those just look too strong because, because if they are white and black and there's no color on them and I put some darker value behind them, they may start to draw too much attention. So it may be that I need to get a little more in before I know if I'm going to add anything to the wings. And if I do, I will add a very thin wash and up here I will put water on it and then just a little bit of color so that it takes the white of the paper down a little bit, but it won't make them look too dark. Burnt sienna? Um, yeah, I would use a, a little bit of burnt sienna. And I'm seeing more burnt sienna in the back wing. and. Yeah. Um, it's a little grayer up in here, so you could add just a touch of like cobalt with the burnt sienna to gray it down just a little bit if you want to. Um, oh, and I think I want to put just a tiny touch because I didn't touch my brush down in here for that section. Okay. All right, so on the flowers, on um, the pink part of the red birds in a tree, I am going to use quinacridone rose or quin rose. You could use permanent rose. Um, they do have a little bit of a, they're not quite pink. This is quin rose straight. They're not quite that pink. They're a little cor more coral. And so if you have quin coral, which I do, um, it's actually closer to that, the quin coral. So maybe I'll use the quin coral, but if you have quin rose, if you take some, probably my Oriolan with the Quin Rose, you can get very close to Quin Coral with that. So um, it's a cooler yellow. So if you don't have Oriolan, you could try Lemon or Hansa Light if you have that. So I'm just going to go with the Quin Coral, I think. Put it way over there, which normally I don't do. <laughs> and um, I think I'm going to start with the flowers that are closer to me and I'm going to try to paint around any of the white highlights that are on them. So if it's a flower that's layered and it's farther back, then um, I am, I can't tell if this is, all right, I can't tell if this one right here is in the background or if that's part of this one right here. Making your best guess, I guess. I think I will put just a little bit of color on this one as well because um, right here I have a water droplet and there's one right here as well. And so by putting um, that piece in, I can now put, oops, I went over my leaf. Um, I can put that other patch of pink in there so that now the water droplet sort of stands out just a little bit there. 
Um, there is just a little tiny bit of pink right up on some of these buds, and it's very minimal. And then I'm going to use, I was thinking I was going to use the uh, green gold over on this guy. Um, I didn't end up using it because I think I was happy enough with the warm green that I'm using, but I think I'll try just to, let me see if I want it in there at all. Yeah, so if you have green gold and you want to put a little more color in, I'm just touching it in a few places because the green gold will be a little more vibrant. And then, because I've now used it on the bird, I can use it over here. And I'm also going to go back into my other greens that I had on there. This is green. This is supposed to... Oh, no, that's red. Never mind. <laughs> okay, so I went over an area that I didn't want that color because that's part of this um, flower, and so I'm just going to see if I can lift. I think hot press is a little harder to lift. Yeah. Oh well. Okay, so it is going to have a little bit of color on there. I am also going to go into this one. I should slow down so that I'm not painting over the whites. And then, uh, let me see what that is. Oh, I made this one up. Never mind. So whatever I want to make it. So it's handy about when you make up some part of your piece. Okay, so these guys need um, a little more depth still, and that's a touch wet, so let me dry it right real quick and I'll put a little more value on it. The um, burnt sienna has not quite dried warm enough. I want it to be just a touch orangier. So if you do not have quin sienna, I would use the um, I would probably use the quin rose with some new gamboge in it because uh, let me see if that's before you write that down. Let me make sure that that's going to work. Yeah. Yep, that'd be okay. So I'm just taking a thin wash and adding a little more of an orangey feel to those areas that I already had the burnt sienna on and that will bring them out a little more and then I'm going to add just a tiny touch of that same kind of warm orange right along those feathers right up in there. Was it Quinn Rose and Newt? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so then uh, right quick over here, I'm going to continue with, um, I'm, I want to put in this guy as red as well, as I was looking at it. I think I want this one red. And some of it is also uh, not also, not just that these are in the foreground, trying to figure out which one I'm going to paint, which one I'm not going to paint, but also does it sort of connect and flow and move down the shape? Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. Um, so it might be that you kind of connect those and then maybe there's uh, a little bit of green like right here that helps connect you to the next red shape. So I'll bring this down. And then I think I want this stem with some green on it. And maybe as this comes down, then I can paint this one. Um, I think I'll go ahead and do this. 
so that way it sort of uh, it doesn't look too um, jumpy or spotted or whatever. Um, so the last thing I'll do on these guys, and then I'll let you guys go back and work on yours, is I want to add just a little more value um, to parts of these flowers. Even though I have the hatch mark in there, they need to be just a little darker in a few places. So I'm taking cobalt with the Quinn Rose and still trying to keep it on the redder side. So I don't want it to be too purple. So I want more red in it, less of the blue. And just by adding a little bit more layer in there, now these start to have um, a little more depth. And I can still use water. So if I take clear water and wet right there, then I can take that sort of shadow mix. And I don't have enough color on my brush. I can use it at the bottom where I've placed that water so that the bottom edge now will fade up into the water that was placed up above and that helps kind of round it and give it a little bit of form. So you can do the same thing here, shadow that. So I'm going to take a little more color and even just using the coral or whatever red you're using a little deeper in color can help give it um, some more depth make it a little more interesting. Okay, so I would keep going and add just a little more in there, leaving some of my pen mark, pen um, without any color, just to kind of complement the bird. And then the next step, once I would have that in, would be to put that background in. So that'll probably be next week. So I'll wait for that. Thank you.